Hi, I'm Phil Blair and welcome to, to Job One. A couple of programs ago, we had Chris Hergert, who is the executive director of the UCSD Career Center on for a program. And we talked a lot about students and how students can use the Career Center at UCSD. What we didn't have time to talk about, and I want to talk about today, is alumni. How, how can they use Career Center? When? How long can go? Can you be a graduate? Veterans, a whole different um, body of students that are facing some challenges. Extension students, am I really a student or not a student? Can I use the facilities at UCSD? Chris, so welcome back yeah, to another segment. Continue. I mean, yeah. you really obviously have got some hot topics for, the, for our students. Let's start with extension students. Okay. What, what's their sure. accessibility to the Career Center? Sure, sure. The you know, extension students are, well, first off, they come with a myriad of skill experience levels, right? And there are thousands and, and thousands exactly. of them, too. And, and, and some of them are certainly in the backyard here in San Diego, and others are across the globe. So the, the challenge from the Career Services perspective, and what we offer at the Career Center, is the office is funded by student fees. That being said, there are programs and services available that are open to kind of alumni, extension students, you know, students that arguably are not paying student fees, right? A few of those offerings are, um, first off, certainly any of our kind of web workshops and webinars that they can kind of, you know, if there's an opportunity to remote in or they're physically can be, you know, on campus for that, they're welcome to attend. We don't close the door for, you know, if they don't have a, you know, an extension student, you know, ID card, that's not a problem. Secondarily, the, the coaches do offer opportunities and we're kind of looking at this in a pilot way of over the breaks. So when our students are not on campus, winter oh. break, spring break, uh -huh. summer, et cetera, when we would have a little more bandwidth to spend some time with students. Because your coaches that are year-round, they're exactly, paid year-round. Exactly, and, right, exactly. And they've got a two-week break and they're kind of like, yeah, what do I do? We have some downtime, right? right exactly. Yeah. So we're looking at kind of, you know, here we are, you know, kind of going into the February. So spring break and probably even more, in mean, a more kind of more broad way is the summer of what are things that we can offer to extension, to alumni, to students that are physically maybe aren't on campus um, that need to kind of polish up or sort of think about what's next from a career perspective. In addition, we're launching a platform which we actually are kind of in conversations to kind of go into the fall called Graduate. Graduate is a alumni to alumni. Graduate. Graduate, exactly. Other UCs are on it. I believe UCLA is on it. Graduate is a program basically for experienced alumni and experienced candidates to post experienced type of roles. So there's going to be this kind of alumni to alumni, you know, 38 something to 40 something kind of platform of posting opportunities at people's companies. So that would be a great kind job of job opportunities. Job opportunities, exactly right. Job opportunities and advice. We have yet to go over exactly how it's going to look, but I said we'll have more updates as we kind of go into the summer, into the next academic year. So now we're on to alumni, right? Yeah, I graduated sure. 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And or I'm a graduate of UCLA. Right. Yep. But I now live in San Diego. So I really want to network with alumni in San Diego. Yep. How many years out can I go back and use the Career Center? Yeah, as well? so, so UC San Diego is a little bit different than some of our other UC peer schools. How we define an alumni and what we do is we don't charge for an alumni to come back to the Career Center or any of our events at all. We don't have a window. There's not like, you know. What we do see, though, is as an alum gets out in school, five years, 10 years, 15 years out, they may be less inclined to some of the services we offer because they're more tailored for somebody that's in their 18 to 20 year old, right? But we do offer things that are kind of transferable regardless of age, like, you know, resume workshops and boot camps, you know, cover letter reviews, LinkedIn profile type activities, um, a lot of, um, you know, career fair and career type activities that companies that are coming back are looking for experienced mm -hmm. hires or even if they're there to hire third year engineering students, they know the right person in the HR department to connect with an alum. So for example, we had a, basically a winter fair this past two weeks ago, as we started the academic year, we had over 200 alumni come back to attend our winter fair, right? We had 2,000 students, but we had 200 alumni. So those alumni, we give them some notice of like, hey, these are the companies that are looking for more experienced, can you know, experienced candidates, uh -huh. and we can connect them in that way. So those are the kind of the value adds or immediate values for And as alumni, I'd go to the Career Center website. website. Exactly. And actually on the website, which you also just relaunched a brand new website in September, there actually is a, uh, you know, a tab, if you will, for kind of how we define it as family, friends, parents, alumni, all in kind of a, a one, one category bucket. And all the resources are listed there. Now, you told us about a program last time you visited 
about how you could match alumni that were in companies or in positions mm -hmm. that I'm interested in as a student. Yeah. Now I am an alumni. Do yeah. I have access to that same sort of matching to know that mm -hmm. there are 50 UCSD graduates yeah. in engineering mm -hmm. at Qualcomm and I'm interested in a job in engineering yeah. at Qualcomm yeah. and I want to network, right. right? We talked about 70, 80% of jobs are found through networking. Right. Alumni is such a great resource. Yeah. Um, how would an alumni access fellow alumni? Yeah, so kind of there's really two ways to do it. I mean, the most obvious one is through the LinkedIn channel, which I mentioned, and basically it's, it's linkedin.com forward slash alumni. You know, and I feel it's amazing how many people are not familiar with this resource. And it's not like it's not marketed. It's not like you have to pay or have the premium account. It's completely free. Um, but it's just another way of defining the LinkedIn. So when you go onto that, basically alumni website, there's six columns that you can kind of, you know, kind of search by where you live, what you do, your skills, your major, um, and kind of connection, first, second, third. What I was mentioning on the last you know, time we got together is if, you know, if an alum goes in and says, okay, I'm living in San Diego. I want to know, and you can actually search by graduation year. So I want to know alums that graduated 10 years ago, 20 years ago. You can search by that. I want to know what those alums are doing, what they majored in. Are they you know, currently here? You can also search by they used to work for a company, but I'm curious, I'm looking for what's next. Where do, where do people that have maybe worked at um, Invasive or, or, or you know, Amazon Labs, where do they go after that? So you can kind of really parse the data and it's all alumni kind of you know, populated. So. And is LinkedIn amalgamating all this information? I mean, mm -hmm. yep. I, I'm alumni 10 years ago, I work at Nuvasive, I graduated or something. That's right. And because it's all on my link page, they That's right. because I might get a LinkedIn message from mm -hmm. a student sure. and go, I, I don't want to talk to you. How did you get my name and information? How did you know I direct? Well, I put it up on LinkedIn, right? So it's pretty public information. Exactly, okay. exactly, yeah. And then the other way, so LinkedIn would be number one. Number and two. Any student yeah. can do this at any school, exactly. right? I mean, this, exactly is, right. this is not this just is not alumni something... at UCSD. Exactly right, exactly okay. right. Yep, and Good so, point. you know, Good and point. they can also, pivot the school, right? You can change it to any school, you can look at it. So if you're really curious, hey, like, who does a company like, um, you know, Walmart Labs, where do they hire their most graduates from? You can actually search by company and they'll tell you where they're grad. It's a, it's a massively incredible tool that's actually underutilized. The other way is the graduate program that I mentioned that will launch kind of over the summer and into the fall. Uh, and alumni will be then on that platform creating profiles and then you'll be able to go on to that platform and say, hey, I want to search for alums from UC San Diego in Seattle, in Boston, in San Diego, and alumni will go and create their profiles. You need to kind of find alumni that so way. So as an alumni, I'm sort of proactive saying, yeah. I'm available to you, reach out to That's me. That's right, exactly. That's the difference. Exactly right. That We're gonna pivot. We had an alumni network. We'll call it an alumni advisor network. You know, and I have my own opinions on it, but basically it, it was, it got populated with a lot of, you know, kind of profiles, and then it wasn't really, you know, it got sleepy. A lot of people didn't kind of go on and use it. We think this is better because it's a lot more curated in the sense that there's other tools besides just profiles, um, jobs, there's career advice, things like that on this graduate platform. And then two, Graduate is a parent entity that has these graduate platforms at other schools, and they are actually then putting also content onto this platform that's relevant for whether you're an alum of UCLA or UC San Diego. So there's other things that can kind of pull them in to the platform. And we're using alumni uh, freely. Yeah. Do I have to have joined it sounds like I don't have to be in a member of the Alumni Association. You do not. You do for not. any of these That's services. right, exactly right. We, we kind of, how, how I think about alum, uh, alumni and, and the university is aligned in this is that a student that has graduated has sort of done their time, they've paid their tuition, <laughs> you know, so to speak. You know, like, some days it felt like serving right, in prison, right, exactly, but that's exactly. okay. So they've learned some things, they've paid their tuition, you know, they're an alumni for life, you know, and I just personally, and the university does not subscribe to charging alumni a, a fee of any sort, whether they're you know, an alum you know, and five years out or 10 years out, they're an alum and they can utilize our services. The, like I said, we wanna make sure, and this is kind of where the Career Center under my leadership will be moving to, is what is the 2.0 with alumni engagement, right? Because we obviously are kind of also in the belief, and this is you know, across the world, that it's about lifelong learning. You know, it's not just about being a student, it's about pivoting, right? So like, let's say fast forward, you've graduated, you're now an alum, and you're like, you know, I wanna start a company. I want to, I need to go back to grad school. You know, I, the world's changed, I got, yeah. I got laid off, and I got I pivot. I thought I wanted to do this until. Exactly right, yeah. exactly right. So we're, as a, as a center, I think, becoming more attuned and more aware of, and we have to be, honestly, because, the, you know, we have to be. Um, we have to be engaged with our current students because they are really alumni in waiting. 
you know, and how do we kind of think about programmatic things, culture, you know, cult opportunities for them to engage. Tee them up for success is what uh, really exactly what you right. need to do. You know, and, and, and as a university, obviously, we really think about how can we also engage with our alums that doesn't involve them spending, you know, financially giving back, you know, time, treasure, you know, you know, in, you know knowledge, things like that. Yeah. That is the easiest, easiest way. And, and the data shows if alumni, we talked last time about trajectories, right, and having a really good trajectory when you graduate, an alumni that feels that they had a really good experience, that they had, you know, advocacy on campus in the career center and otherwise, they got on a good trajectory, they've been engaged, they've been maybe connecting with some students, maybe they hired an intern, whatever, you know, they just feel like they're a better, you know, card-carrying member of that university sure. and they're more likely to be back engaged with us for other things. Yeah. And keeping in mind that for young people, I don't, avoiding the word millennial, right. for young people, their average job is slightly over two years. Yeah. So they're gonna be moving right. along, That's trying right. to decide what they wanna do and what excites them at the time. Yeah. And for the general population, it's slightly over four years. So because you majored in this, or because your first job mm -hmm. was in accounting or was in a lab, doesn't mean your whole career yeah. is gonna be 35 years with that company, with that industry. Yeah. And, and so these tools are so important that they come back. Life's never static, you know, and they really have to think about, okay, what am I doing on a weekly basis? This is many daily to stretch, but weekly to think about what's next. You know, are they making some new connections? Are they going to some niche events, um, like you know, where they're going to bump into people that could potentially happen down the road? You know, just just and it's it's kind of making it just osmotically, not structured, but more just kind of like um, you know, in, in kind of these sort of unscripted moments is yeah. how I like to refer to them of like. You're, you're meeting somebody through an event because it's through the Economic Development Council, or you're you're, you're on the uh, soccer field for your son or daughter's your game, and you're just kind of being being conversational. You Networking know? at its best, right? Exactly right. That's you know, right. another niche, veterans. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Let's let's talk what it, whether they're alumni, extension, enrolled students. You know, we we talked earlier about. Yeah. I've been in in the Marines for 10 years, I've been to Iraq, I've been to Afghanistan, I've mm -hmm. had a lot of experiences there, and now I'm on a campus with 36,000, what yeah. number? Yeah, And Almost 40. many of yeah. them are 18 years old, yeah. and I'm 32 with two kids, and we're equals in yeah. the classroom. Yeah. Yeah. How do you support veterans? Yeah, so there's a number of resources on campus. First off, there is a veteran center on campus that does a lot of... Separate from the Career Center. Exactly, exactly. Okay. completely separate. Um, there's also, of course, a student club, as you'd expect, you know, with, you know, and I think there's actually, if I remember right, because of San Diego being so heavily, um, you know, aware of, you know, the Navy, the Marines, mm -hmm. and other sort of, you know, other uh, armed services here, um, there's actually some sub-clubs within them, you know, obviously as well. But there is definitely, like I said, a center, the clubs, and they do a lot of kind of, we'll call it leveling the field around, you know, skill sets, right? Translation of leading teams, which is such a massive piece right, from our, our veteran population. Um, you know, working with ambiguity, such a huge skill, right? Being able to solve problems without complete data sets, right? And without getting flustered, right? Exactly, right, yeah. working under pressure, all, the, all those kind of things. And we've actually seen companies now, and this is an intriguing kind of play, and this is not new, but companies are coming specifically to campus saying, hey, we're looking for veterans mm -hmm. for a myriad of reasons, right? They, they resonate, all the skill sets resonate. They, you know, it financially is, is good for them to pick, you know, have veterans on their, you know, they add value to the company culture, all those and things. And it's the right, right thing to do, period, Exactly, yeah, right? exactly. They paid so, their dues. you know, we're seeing opportunities of, of, of companies coming back using some of our, our platforms we discussed and posting roles like open to veterans only or veterans highly really? encouraged to That's apply. That's specific. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so we basically are utilizing some of the clubs and some of the centers and saying, hey, as a veteran on campus, make sure you're doing some keyword searches, you know, through the platforms because there is companies that are specifically, you know, open, you know, and really looking for for your, your type of skill set and what you can bring. Play that chit while you got it, yeah, right? Exactly. It's a valuable exactly. chit yeah. to, a, to yeah. a lot of companies. And then the one thing too, as you mentioned about like you know uh, a veteran who's thirty something and you know in, in a classroom maybe with the you know, eighteen or, or graduating, right? I from my work at UNC, obviously there's massive military operations in the state of North Carolina. Uh, one of the things we started really encouraging is the veteran to veteran connection. Yeah, you know, encouraging because there is such a Peer bond, group. such a bond, right? So especially in metro regions, you know, places, you know, like here San Diego and, and other large metros, there is huge veteran groups. There's legions, there's, there's just people that are, are want to kind of help and pay it forward. Um, so definitely the civic engagement side is definitely an important piece, not just, you know, the campus kind of channel. And then the other piece we've seen as well is um, getting involved and obviously getting out there. For example, if the 
you know, the veterans are so, so, so widespread and there's, and there's so many opportunities for them, but it doesn't have to be in the backyard. There's so much value we find even for a current student to get on a flight, go to a new city, set up some meetings, and, and, you know, and use those connections because you never know where the right opportunity is going to present itself. And veterans especially are very geographically flexible in most, in most cases, yeah. right? You know, they, well, they, the cost of living here, many of them have to leave San yeah, Diego, whether right. they want to or not. Right, exactly. So yeah. encouraging them to kind of do some outreach you know, proactively as well. Helps with that. And if we go to the Career Center, do you have yeah. um, peer to peer? Do you do yeah. you keep veterans on staff? We do. So we, what we do is we actually on our, my, when I came in, we um, had a, a really large team, and they were more generalists in nature. And the problem sometimes when you're a generalist is when you talk to everybody, you really talk to nobody. So I've dialed back and asked the team to specialize, kind of around two areas. One is the the role of the kind of the department they're in. So uh, engineering, arts and humanities, social sciences. We have teams. I refer to the steel teams because of you know the aquatic ones and the other ones in Coronado, right? <laughs> <laughs> which, which you know which seems relevant. Uh, but these steel teams are strategic tactical teams made up of advisors, of faculty, of student club leaders, um, you know, other other sort of partner, like my alumni partners. Uh -huh. And it's all about a certain vertical: engineering, you know, arts and humanities, whatever. The other area I've asked my team said, find a population of students, international students, veterans, exchange students, um, you know, uh, you know, part cultural community center students, whatever, and do some programs specifically for them. Because we have found, right, when you bring together students based upon not their year in school or their their major or their department, but more of a cultural affinity or some something else, mm -hmm. it is massively valued to connect the dots to the other, basically advising and getting people where they otherwise wouldn't bump into each other. So I do have a colleague on my team that is focused in on our veteran population that helps with that. So we've covered extension, we've covered alumni, we've covered veterans, potential students? Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. So incoming students, right? The the biggest thing uh, I would advise, uh, there's, there's kind of a couple things, two or three things I think I would advise a, a parent and a student as they're thinking about, you know, what's next, you know? The number one thing, you know, obviously is the cultural feel of the campus and, and visiting the campus, but the tour only goes sometimes this deep. Finding friends from high school, you know, recent alumni, and getting that kind of first-hand research and doing the research and saying, like, how was the degree? How was your campus experience? What, what did you like about it? What didn't you like? Doing it all over again, would you do the same thing? You know, so that's number one. Number two is thinking about how important it is from just, as we talked about who you know and the network piece, where are the alumni gone? So initially, if a student's coming in saying, I know I want to do this, how many alumni have gone out and do that? Is that, you know, 50%, is it 10%? You you, know? An interesting yeah, thing to interrupt is, is the number of students two years out that are working in the field that they studied yeah in school mm -hmm. and it was it's something like two-thirds are not yeah yeah which yep. is being profoundly flexible yep. there's a positive right. but the naysayers would say well why did you get a degree in English yeah, if you're yeah. going to be writing code mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right there yep. was a mismatch the sure. school didn't direct you where you right or you didn't ask the right questions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is that a problem or not? It depends on your perspective. I mean, I think you could view it as, I did not maybe maximize my degree because it didn't set me up to go where I want to go. But I would argue, you know, it wasn't the degree or it wasn't a class or it wasn't, the, it wasn't that that made you successful, it was you. You know, and it was what you did with it. And I, again, I think that is part of just life matriculation, you know, and it's about, kind of taking what's given and what you have and making the most of it, you know, and, and find the opportunity. So I think, you know, it's really about the way you think. And in a, a four-year degree from UCSD gives you kind of all the sort of toolkit mm -hmm. things, both the hard skills and I'd argue the soft skills, which I call the power skills, but they're the ones that kind of move the needle on so many things, um, to kind of take and to do and to make them your own, right, and to and do those type of things. Um, and so I, I'd say that it's, you know, Talk to the current students about what they've done. Look at the trajectories. We talked about that last time, you know, of where students have gone. And, and kind of say, is this something that, you know, could kind of put me up, you know, give me optionality. Life's about options. It could give me different optional career paths, you know, that I could go into, that you're not kind of limiting yourself in one way, um, you know, going that yeah. way. Around. Yeah. The last thing I'd say is I really encourage the team and I empower them to ask tough questions. You know, life's about tough questions. And we don't want to just come in and talk with the students and say, oh, yes, yes you've got it all figured out. We really want to be critical. We really want to ask. Why are you majoring in? Yeah, what, how are you going to earn a living yeah. in 
English. I mean, is this really what you, well, that's it's right. easy, or I like writing, or, right. yeah. And, yeah, and we can be such important. a support group to at, at your staff at the Career Center. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Lots of great information. Um, look on our previous program. Chris was with us um, recently and talked about the Career Center and all the programs that it offers to current students. So if you're a student, pay attention to that. And join us next time on Job One at UCSD Career Channel. Thank you.